In this part here, we're going to go over the general specs of the uh, 3D Promise um, microscope from Seiler. So in this part here, I'd like you to kind of look at this microscope here and kind of take, um, let it absorb in first, because this is not the usual microscope as you can see. And uh, many of us are so used to use the conventional operating microscope that I just want you to kind of let it absorb in. And you can already see the major differences um, between this and the 2D microscope. And I'm going to go over the, the other differences that will have critical uh, differences or, or have critical imp importance in the way this is going to help you uh, chair side. So first of all, you can see there's no binoculars. And uh, prior to this, we had already discussed how this gives us clinicians the freedom of uh, of moving and of practicing. Um, let me describe the parts here. So here's the power and you can increase the, um, the intensity of the lighting, but this should not be used unless you're in very, very dark areas of the mouth. Um, it's set up optimally to actually work without you having to initially play with the lighting for, uh, most of the time. And here is the um, conventional six steps. Um, of the microscope and it will take you anywhere from 3x to 24x. Um, here's the value of focus and the great thing, um, I know at least for Siler, the great thing is that it comes standard on the microscope and it offers you a, um, uh, a few parameters here. So field of view is um, uh, 100 millimeters and uh, the depth of view will be um, varying from uh, 200 to 350 millimeters here um, from your patient's mouth. As you can see here, this is the part that is uh, going to help you very, very much in using the mi microscope here in the fact that you don't have to move it up and down constantly. And that's called very focus. And unlike many other brands, this comes standard on uh, the microscope. And it offers you the ability to actually range anywhere from 200 and 350 uh, millimeters and that is where you don't have to move the microscope up and down. Um, other than that, since we're in that area, let's talk about uh, field of view and uh, the field of view is a hundred millimeters um, which is really great field of view but more importantly is the depth of view and that is way way more than what the 2D microscope usually offers and that is going to give you 40 millimeters of um, uh, depth of field and that is where uh, many of these um, characteristics put the 3D microscope ahead of the uh, 2D microscope. The LED light that's in there should actually get you a very very long time and will get you to probably for some of us to use it until we retire. Um, that is 50,000 um, hours and that is a long long time. Um, other than that, let's move on to another part uh, of the microscope and that's a part that's uh, over here which is the filter and that offers you the filter for uh, composite uh, but also the green filter that allows you to distinguish blood from tissue. Um, other than that, uh, let's look at this portion here which is the 3D monitor and that is this is actually unique to the system. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the monitor in other brands is not situated on the microscope and that is usually situated somewhere else and the, the clinician has to hover between the, the screen that's somewhere else and the area of practice. Whereas here you can see uh, the field is in, um, the screen is in front of us and optimally it should be in this position. Just watch me. It should be as I'm working and I'm going to move it to simulate the patient here. As I'm working um, you should be able to look at the screen pretty much at a 90 degree perpendicular angle here and still um, be able to see an optimal view of the image. And that is where it's very, very important and this is the uh, benefit of this microscope is it allows us to actually have that optimal view uh, while we're practicing. And that screen actually is a pretty much um, one size fits all. It's gonna go from uh, someone who's, um, let's say five, five foot two uh, tall to someone who's uh, six foot uh, four, for example. And uh, anyone here could just use this with this function here where we can raise the screen. 
so that it adapts to each of us um, and, and it can be moved up and down like that. And again, it's very, very important this to be in an optimal position for us to have uh, a good view of what we're doing. Uh, now, the, the one important thing that most of us would have a problem at the beginning with is that we would still be looking for the binoculars that we're used to having. Um, and you can imagine that if there were binoculars, this part here wouldn't be able to move much because the binoculars would be way over here and we couldn't be very much uh, working. But here, because we're no longer tied to the binoculars, you can see that the, how free this part is now is going to uh, play a major role in the positioning of this part to actually look into the mouth. So depending on what part of dentistry you use or you, you work, work in, this is going to allow you to have a lot of flexibility in terms of positioning, etc. And um, other than that, let's um, talk about the outputs of the system. And what the output does is that it allows us to, in addition to the screen, is to have um, other ways of projection or of capturing. And by that, I mean we could have an extra screen for observers and for those of us who teach, you could have um, your students just be watching a live demo on a screen and wear 3D glasses and it, they would exactly see what we're doing in the, in the patient's mouth. Um, as far as the output for capturing, there's a 2D output that would go to any capturing device that you would have um, and that would actually record uh, live videos uh, or, record, or take still photos. Um, and that would be either for rec recording purposes or for teaching purposes. In this part here, we're going to discuss more specifically about the positioning of the microscope over the patient and how we're going to optimize the um, outcome when using a 3D microscope. So as you can see here, we're going to simulate the use of the microscope over an imaginary patient uh, who is laying in a chair. My preferred position is that my patient is pretty much almost uh, flat in the chair. And for endo purposes, of course, most of the time this, the pod is going to either look all the way down straight or we can orient it slightly to one side or, or another. And unlike in the 2D microscope where we now having to shift our head to accommodate the positioning of the binoculars, here we're still looking at the screen in a very ergonomic position and having to, um, not having to just kind of move with the binoculars. And as far as um, working in the mouth, you're gonna have, um, if you can pay attention here to my, my hand simulating the mirror, anytime we wanna work in the mouth, uh, we want to, for ease of, of use, to have, of course have direct vision. But for endodontic purposes, we're going to have to look into the canal and whether you position the pod in more extreme uh, positioning, it's not going to get us the direct vision we need. So most of the time in endodontics, we're going to have to use the mirror for indirect vision. And the key is to position your mirror and then have your microscope kind of go in and look onto the mirror. And that is not something that is going to change from the conventional microscope uh, experience that most of us have. The, um, beyond endodontics, then of course, you have this flexibility of the pod that will really get you to which of a part of the tooth you're interested in. And it's much more flexible outside of endodontics. Why? Because we're not looking, trying to look in, inside the pulp chamber or onto the canal orifices. And that is where um, most procedures be, besides endodontics will actually have this flexibility that can take advantage of um, uh, the 3D microscope much, much more than when uh, we use a 2D microscope. And um, because we have such a large range of, uh, of um, the very focus that you see here, it allows us to not to have to lift the microscope up and down as we're working because you can see that in itself would change our ergonomics if we had to constantly work with um, the, the height of the microscope. In this case, you would have uh, the video focus here that would allow you to range anywhere from 200 to three, uh, 350 um, and not having to lift the microscope up and down. Um, 
lighting, I want to insist that the lighting here on the microscope is much easier on the eyes, both for the patients, the assistants, and of course for us, the clinician. Why? Because we're no longer looking into binoculars with very high intensity lighting. We're actually looking at the screen. And this is where the cameras that are in the pod are actually uh, reconfiguring the image so that we can look at, at the screen just like normal instead of having to look at very highly lit areas. Um, just for, for uh, comparison, we're talking about 15,000 lux of lighting in this case versus um, 150,000 lux, which is a lot of light uh, onto our eyes. So the strain on the eyes um, for all people involved is going to be much less in this case than uh, if it were a 2D microscope.